Um, well, he gets in trouble on some stuff. Good morning and welcome. If I am not loud enough at any time, please throw something at me. <laughs> and I will change the sound and volume of my voice. All right, I need to know, uh, how many of you have played a musical instrument? Come on, come on, admit it to it. Oh yeah, admit it, yeah. And how many of you went to St. Cloud State University or normal college? Yeah, 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 a few of you, okay. None of you graduated, probably. <laughs> That's right. My name's Glenn Tumal. This is my 11th year at St. Cloud State University. They have not gotten rid of me yet, but they keep trying. Uh, it's a great place to work, and a few years ago, I applied for a sabbatical. If you have never taken a sabbatical, they are awesome, because you get to do a lot of fishing, and you also get to do research, which I'm a nerd, and I like research. So, I did all my research on the history of the St. Cloud State Band Program. That is the nerdiest thing I could ever have done research on. So, first thing first, guess what year, because nobody knew, nobody had a clue, what was the first year that St. Cloud State had a band? I expect you to yell something at me. What year? 1930. Okay, 1930, any other guess? 1922. Whoa, that's pretty accurate. All right, 1922. Any other guesses? 29. 29, 20-ish. Right in that beginning. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna get to that because that's the the whole point of this presentation of where did we get from and how did we get there. So St. Cloud obviously uh, established in 56. The state becomes a state in 58. Uh, the first session of the St. Cloud Normal School was what year? 1869. Excellent. You get an award for that. Yeah. <coughs> the interesting thing was all through this period of the state of Minnesota getting founded in the, and the St. Cloud City actually being developed, there was a huge revolution in bands everywhere. Why? Because we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have internet. We didn't have, there was nothing else to do. Look at that. These are all local bands in the St. Cloud area. Wow. One of my favorite ones being the Bicycle Band. The Bicycle Band in St. Cloud only lasted a couple years. They played at the State Fair, and they just kind of disbanded. They never happened again. But they did happen. All these things were going on in the community area, as well as St. Cloud Normal School getting. I love this photo, Cold Spring. Such a, you, do you know what photo bombing is? Uh, photo bombing is when you get in someone else's photo. Yes. Look at that little kid right there. <laughs> it's the first example of modern photo bombing going on. And, just as important, Sousa came to St. Cloud. That is huge. He came here three times and performed here three times. Now, when that happened, everything shuts down. Everybody goes to hear Sousa's band. Why? Because he was amazing, and it's live music, and you don't even have the internet or radio or anything. So you had all this going on. You had community bands, you had community organizations, you had orchestras even going on, you had Sousa's band going on. You had the St. Cloud Normal School getting established, the Kimball Town Band. Ah, oh, that's great. They're so small. Wait, Park had a band? Yeah. I come on, Wait, Park. St. Joseph Town Band, the St. Cloud Military Band that then became, later on, after many, many changes, the St. Cloud Municipal Band of today. Uh, St. Cloud Normal School actually had a Department of Art with Drawing and Music in 1873. The catalog in 1887 finally mentioned a music department. Just as important, the football team started in 1895 and the men's basketball team in 1901. But 1917, I figured out, was the real important year. 1917, lots of stuff changes. Big catalyst, the St. Cloud Boys Band. Does everybody know about this one? Oh, you should know about this. All right, a guy named G. Oliver Riggs. Uh, he had been really good at starting boys' bands. Now, no, no women allowed, just, just boys, of course. 1917, G. Oliver Riggs came, and he started a boys' band in St. Cloud, and it was huge, over 100 members, and they played everywhere, and they were famous. 
this was a catalyst. This was a major catalyst in the development of the band at St. Cloud State University. That boys band was a huge catalyst, along with G. Oliver Riggs. The other big one was, uh, sorry for the cutoff, St. Cloud Tech High School was founded in 1917. That's another catalyst for the start of the program at the university in the band. St. Cloud Ladies Band, because you know, we don't want men and women in the same band, because that causes problems. Uh, yes, the St. Cloud Reformatory had a band before St. Cloud State University. Uh, I also find this picture, this poor guy with the bass drum back there, I don't know what he did, but uh, you know, he's in the reformatory school, but he must have done something. <laughs> that poor bass drum. Yeah. This is another catalyst. Carleton College came to campus and played a concert. Now, what do you think it's like when you're on campus and another band comes and plays and they're good and you don't have one? What's that like? That's it. That's like, ooh, I don't like that. We should get Carleton College. Having them play on campus was actually one of the best things that ever happened before the band. Now we're getting into the 1920s now. That's 1925. Of course, there's the St. Cloud Boys Band. Yeah. In 1925, they built the Granite Bandstand, which is in what was Central Park, which is now Barton Park. But look at that. It's huge. Did the St. Cloud Normal School have a band? No. <laughs> no. They had an orchestra. They had a choir. They had a glee club. They had a mandolin club, which I don't even want to know what that is. But they had no band yet, which is really, really weird. Sorry for the cutoff. Uh, interesting transition here. They finally had their first homecoming, so that was important. They dedicated Brown Field. They had a pep fest and a throw-together band, but as I learned quickly, they had no band, and they're going to have a homecoming football game. You've got to have a band. What do you do? You get the St. Cloud Boys Band. So the St. Cloud Boys Band actually played for our homecoming because we had no band yet. Uh, things change slowly in life. All right, 1927. 1927 is officially so. I, we had a 29 over here, didn't we? Yeah, you yeah. point at him. Yeah, yeah, point at him. Yeah. All right. Oh, take credit for it. Just raise your hand. Yeah. yeah. 1927 is officially the first year. Why? Because it's the first year I could find in a yearbook that it actually has in the information there. Uh, interesting thing about this. I started going through transcripts because St. Cloud State actually keeps the transcripts of everyone. And because freedom of information, it's like, you know, they're, they're, they're passed away, so you, you can look at their transcripts and see their grades. It's legal to do that. I couldn't find them all. And it was frustrating me. I couldn't find all those students. I found a few of them. And I was like, well, I want to know everything there is to know about them. I couldn't find them. I was really getting confused. And then one morning, when I woke up on sabbatical, I figured out, I think I know where they are. I think I know where they're missing. Where do you think they were? Take a guess. Why don't you think all those students were in the transcripts from St. Cloud State? They weren't students. What were they? Boys band. And just as importantly, that 1917 connection, they were students at St. Cloud Technical High School. So I went to St. Cloud Tech High School, and I went and found one of their yearbooks, and drinking coffee, I went through it, and there they were. I had pictures of them, like, ah, oh, you weren't even in college. In fact, those St. Cloud Tech students, not all of them even went on to college. They just were, they were around, and, and the students were like, hey, let's start a band. Uh, you, 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 and you, what are you doing on Friday? Come and play with us. All right, thanks. This band, the first band, was student run, student started, student organized. University had nothing to do with it. Uh, it's unfortunate, but that's just the way it happened. That's just the way it happened. 1927, that's the first year. And yeah, 40% of the band weren't, weren't, even, weren't even students. Um, I'm going to go back here. Uh, anybody see anything interesting with this photo? I figured this out at about 3 a.m. 
one morning on sabbatical. Anybody see something unusual about this photo? No uniforms. They, they're not all holding instruments, but they do play instruments. Anything else you see unusual? Mary? No women. I mean, th this hit me at about 3 a.m. on sabbatical. Look at the trombone player. He's not holding the trombone correctly. He's holding it backwards. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens when you stay up really late and you drink a lot of coffee. On All right? He's holding it backwards. Now, look at the sousaphone. It's a left-handed sousaphone. They're not left-handed. They're right-handed sousaphones. But back in the 1920s, they actually manufactured a limited number of left-handed sousaphones. They're collector's items now because they don't exist. But that hit me. That hit me. Yeah, yeah. That makes no sense. But he learned trombone backwards. He's probably left-handed. And the tuba was probably around there. Yeah, 3 a.m. That's what you get for going on sabbatical. Yeah. St. Cloud Tech High School, good. G. Oliver Riggs, this is another uh, important part in the development of the band program, is the tax law of 1927. I know you're really excited to talk about tax law today. And um, the thing is, the tax law of 1927 actually allowed for the St. Cloud Municipal Band to exist because it made it legal for a community or a town or a city to tax themselves to pay for a band. Huge difference, huge difference. And we still do that today. That's where the St. Cloud Municipal Band has financial support from. The tax law, G. Oliver Riggs was extremely important in that. A couple articles. Uh, let's give a big Victor Rupp, big hand, the official director. Does the name Victor Rupp look familiar? Yeah. It's okay, I'm really tough. The previous photo with the uh, left-handed trombone, that's him! <laughs> so he graduated and they made him director. <laughs> that's crazy! Like, what kind of qualifications do you have? Anyway, he became the first director, the first official director in 1928. So congratulations, here's your diploma. We'll see you at work on Monday. And he became the first director. I love that information though because nobody Nobody had any clue that was actually going on. Um, another catalyst that happened is the North Dakota Band. North Dakota had a great band program even back then, and they came to the university and played as well. Also, 1929, college catalog finally lists a band. <laughs> now, once you get in the catalog, I know this from teaching there, once you're in the catalog, you exist. <laughs> but until, like in the phone book, if you're not in the phone book, you don't exist. So if you're not in the catalog, but they finally got in the catalog with Mr. Rupp actually listed as the director. Development happened pretty quick after that. You know that was the music studio. It, it no longer exists. It was, it used to be right next to Eastman. Eastman. Very good. Right next to Eastman. You, you're going to pass one of my classes. <laughs> <laughs> Not today. Later. Uh, so right next to Eastman. Uh, that was also used not only for the music in the band, what was it also used for? Housing of student athletes. <laughs> and yes, I did find a memorandum in, ar uh, in archives of a complaint about the student athletes leaving cigarette butts around the, the music studio. So yeah, yeah. But it got torn down because it was really old, really, really pretty bad. Uh, this is an interesting one. There's Old Main, but more interestingly enough, you can see there are women in the band. There actually are women in the band. A lot of band programs at the collegiate level started as all male, uh, Texas A&M, and stayed all male for a long time. Forget integration, yeah, yeah. But I think we actually had women in the band program because we had to. Uh, we then started splitting, we had a junior band, we had a senior band. Uh, Laura Maynard became one of the better full-time directors. Uh, Maynard is an interesting guy, uh, doing research on him. 
<laughs> I, I looked through his job record, and he, he uh, ended up working uh, right after St. Cloud State going to a place called Royal Oak, Michigan. You ever heard of it? Yeah? yeah? That's where I was born. <laughs> he, that's where I went to school. So he actually worked in Royal Oak, Michigan, and I found his house, and I was like, wow, he lived there. That's creepy. So, yeah, interesting guy. Uh, retired in California, really interesting guy. Now, Benjamin Maynard took over after Lauren Maynard. Yeah, Benjamin was the brother. You want to talk about connections? Yeah, you were just in the band, so we're going to make you director. Oh, you're the brother of? Well, there you go. You got the job after that. <laughs> Percy Riggs, however, was also playing in the senior band. So you've got the overlap of the boys' band. And G. Oliver Riggs, if you don't know anything about him, uh, talk to Joy Riggs. She is the expert at it. G. Oliver was an amazing band master. Not a band director, but a band master. I've been told stories about how G. Oliver, if you came to practice and you didn't know your part, <coughs> G. Oliver would pick up a thing called the telephone and call home and tell your parent that you didn't know your part before you walked home from practice. Now that, that's, pretty, that's pretty big. Um, back then, that was huge. G. Oliver was a taskmaster and he was a disciplinarian, but that helped the band program at St. Cloud State immensely. One of my favorite articles uh, digging through, 1931, it's an article talking about the band and everything, but could you please, if you can see it from where you are, uh, read the last sentence with me. It goes right, I'll help you out, right here. In that band of 40 who were blaring out brave marches and fighting songs,